This then is part two of a video where I'm attempting to repair an electric scooter that has one of these batteries in the front stem, hence the name of the video. You can check out the other video up there. The story to date is that the e-scooter wouldn't charge, no life in it at all, and when I took it apart I found that the wiring was damaged on the motor which had caused a short circuit and also the wiring is damaged in several places apparently during manufacture. Looking here we can see a cut in the wire and the inner copper exposed. I'm not sure if it's actually completely broken through but clearly it is not helping matters. This is the little XT30 connector for the main power and the JST for the charger. I've gone ahead and removed a few little screws which were holding this top plate on and hiding down in the first compartment here is a BMS or battery management system board which should have protected the battery from the short circuit. We are about to find out. Conveniently the specification is written on the battery so it will contain 18650 type cells in a 7S2P or 7 series 2 parallel configuration giving us 4 ampere hours at a nominal voltage of 24 volts, maximum power 105.6 watts. Somewhat amusingly it does say do not short circuit, do not disassemble. In a cavalier fashion I should be completely ignoring that advice. In the end here then we can clearly see the two in parallel of the first pair. Taking a look down the side here we can see the individual balance wires coming up from the pairs of cells that will be connecting to the BMS inside. At this moment I have no real idea how to get the thing apart. One of the reasons for making the video is that I couldn't find anyone that had done this before or videoed it. There appear to be some locating pins or splines on the sides here so my idea is simply to give it a wiggle and maybe get a screwdriver in there and see if this is going to come apart. Gently easing it apart here, we don't want to stick the screwdriver in too far and short something out. Having pushed it apart from those pins then, looks like we need to release this. This was stopping it coming out, so now all shall be revealed. As suspected then, a fairly conventional arrangement for the BMS main power wires here and the battery connections with the associated balance ports. Now then it is time to see if there's any life in any of the cells. In no particular order then on the balance connector carefully put our negative on the first connection. The first pair then measuring 3.48 6.92, 10.38, This one also measures 13.6, so there's a pair of apparently dead cells there. And finally 17.45. So it appears that in the center there from this point on, there is no charge in any of those pairs of cells. All is not lost then. Uh, clearly I've had no idea if this is working. The next thing I'm going to do is to connect a charger up and see if there's any charge current going to it. Clearly at some point anyway we will need to repair this cable as it has that nasty cut in it. Just another note before we close out this section. If you think you can measure the battery voltage across here then if it's in a discharged state then you're not going to see very much at all because the BMS will be protecting the battery and effectively disconnecting it. So we're only getting some 0.3 volts on there. Rather than using the conventional charger I used this little bench top power supply which I made. Link to the video up there. This is set then for 29.4 volts at 2 amps. Using this supply I can vary the amount of current up to 5 amps I think uh, but 2 amps is the nominal power. Not surprisingly 
when I turned it on, uh, the battery took no charge whatsoever. The next step then is that I've disconnected the balance lead from the BMS board. That way I can measure the individual cells and see if I can bring them up to voltage using this supply as well. Uh, clearly I won't be set to 29.4 volts at that point. You can see there that I've changed it to M2. It has uh, I think six different memory locations that you can set and in this one I've set it to 4.2 volts at up to 4 amps which is a little excessive but as I'm testing here what I shall do is to flip over to the current here and reduce that down to say 1 amp just for testing purposes. There, So that's now set for 4.2 volts at 1 amp. Here then what I'm doing is to use a couple of pins which are fine enough to go into the connector here. By the way to remove the connector I had to scrape away some glue, epoxy type glue that was holding it in. As we saw when I measured the individual cell voltages, the, the first cell pair are OK and then there are two pairs of cells that had no voltage on them at all. And that's where I've got the pins on the first one of those now. This is the negative one. Clearly you have to be very careful not to short anything out. So I have this pin bent at 90 degrees. Um, with that connected to the cell, we see no voltage on there. That would read a voltage if there were any present. If I power the unit on now, you can see it's gone into constant current at 1 amp and the cell voltage is very slowly coming up. Realistically, if the cell voltage falls much below 3 volts, then the cell is normally not recoverable. But we'll give it a try anyway, just to see. If it was going to work, then I'd expect to see the cell voltage come up quite rapidly. Uh, on the contrary, though, it's hanging around 1.33 volts there, even though it's drawing an amp, and even gone down there to 1.3. Therefore, those cells are kaput. Turning it off now, then removing the pins from that cell, and moving on to the next one. Again, no voltage displayed. Turning it on. Slightly higher voltage. You can see it again in constant current, limited to the one amp there. But once again, the cell voltage is actually falling. Those two pairs of cells then will need to be replaced. The next challenge then will be how to get to them. The cells that we need to replace are located in these two compartments here. Fortunately then there's not too much disassembly to do, I hope. This then is the negative end of the battery and soldered to that is the black wire that goes to the balance lead and somewhat perversely a red wire which is actually negative. One has to be so careful when uh, testing these things. First job then will be to remove those wires. With those wires removed then and having removed the glass fibre tape and cut around the labels here we should then be able to remove this last enclosure. Just moving the tab, solder tab out of the way there and finally we can remove that to reveal the cells. So each one then, not surprisingly, 2000 milliampere hours, 18650. I don't recognize the make. It would appear that whoever manufactured the battery wasn't the manufacturer of the scooter. This is quite well made. Quick sanity check now. This being the first pair of cells, they should have a good voltage. Indeed, 3.88, that's perfect. And these should be dead, as near as. The next challenge then will be to find some suitable replacement cells. 
Being the consummate pack rat that I am, it hasn't taken me long to find some suitable replacement cells. These LG cells are nominally rated at 2200mAh. That's a good enough fit, I think. I will have to modify the connection though, so I'm going to spot weld this little tab on here so that I can solder it in the same way as the original cells. The strange chirping that you may hear is not a cicada, it's my faithful spot welder. There, nice and strong. Now I can solder the battery connection together. Now to repeat the process for the final pair. Just as an aside, clearly there's room in here for two pairs of cells. Therefore, should you feel the desire, you could probably make yourself up a pack of higher capacity. With the pack back together then, the replacement cells, I've reconnected the balance lead. Let's just have a check of the voltages across here. First cell then 3 .8, 7.58, 11.54, 15.4, 19.28, 23, and finally 27. So things are looking good on that side. Connecting up our charger now and switching on. We can see the 29 volts there and the current. It's to be expected as this pack is completely out of balance that the charge current is going to be bouncing around all over the place. I would assume at this point, if the BMS is functioning correctly, that it will be attempting to balance out the cells. The best thing to do now is to leave it to settle down. It's been a few hours now I've disconnected the charging port. Not seeing anything on the output connector. If we remember from the battery label, the low voltage cutoff was at some 20.5 volts and the pack is now measuring 28 volts. In theory then at least we should have some output here. I guess there's two possibilities at least. One being that the BMS is faulty or in some cases I've heard that there is some kind of signaling that comes down from the controller to activate the BMS. The next thing I'm going to do then is to hook up the controller and see where we go from there. Clearly I won't be able to connect the motor but at least the LCD display and the other things should work and maybe the battery will wake up. Let's see. I've connected up the display and the throttle and brake connections. Of course I have no idea whether the controller itself is functional and at this point the whole thing could uh, go up in smoke which would make for a much more entertaining video I guess. Let's see. Oh, so far no smoke and flames. Will it switch on? Clearly not. Clearly then at this point we need to have a sort of process of elimination. Perhaps if I remove this connector and power the thing via my bench power supply, we'll see if the display comes on then. With my power supply set back to 29.4 and with the current limit down to half an amp, let's see if we can let the magic smoke out this time. Switching on, it's drawing no current. And if we try and initialize it. 
Oh, that's the first time I've seen the display. Well, there we're seeing the full battery symbol there. We're not getting the voltage down here. I guess that's just one of the settings. Ah, oh, there we go. 29.2 volts. It would appear then at least the LCD is working. Things are pointing then now to the BMS potentially being faulty. If you watched the first video in this series, you'll realise that I have, I have another scooter, the, the white one, with a, a battery issue. I guess it's time to take that apart. Once we've taken that apart, perhaps we can create some sort of Frankenstein monster out of the two. This then is the battery pack out of the white scooter, using the same method probing with my pins carefully in the balance connector. have discovered that in this pack there are in fact three sets of cells which are completely duff. I say sets of cells because looking at the battery here, it's creased, but it says 6.6 .6 amp hours. Therefore it's no surprise when we look in the end there that there are three cells in each of the packs, making this a 7S 3P battery. I had hoped to close out this video with something working, but I can't just easily swap the BMS boards between the two, as in true Chinese fashion, the balance leads are completely the opposite way round. The positive and negative are reversed. Rewiring that would be an absolute nightmare, so I've had to order a new BMS, and there'll be a follow-up video when I fit that. Many thanks for watching.